Uh, I turn now to uh, uh, Raed Sharafeddin. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. While the global health crisis and large-scale lockdowns resulting from COVID-19 is inflicting a huge impact on different levels of the global economy, including risk, risk, risk growth, risk management, inflation, and over-indebtedness, the divergent recovery among advanced, emerging, and developing economies has been a major concern. In addition to the aforementioned risks, inherited Inherent downside financial risks have exacerbated, particularly excessive risk taking and abnormal asset valuations, vulnerabilities of the non bank financial intermediaries, financial tensions due to market corrections, crypto asset dis disruptions, and cyber insecurity. Due to the widening gap between economies, improvements in global health and economic indicators might have significant upside risks for global economy and vulnerable developing economies in particular. Lebanon is a developing country that is struggling on diverse fronts, which are general and specific in nature. One is COVID-19 lockdown. Two is the geopolitical tensions, including the Syrian crisis. Three, the liquidity crisis that erupted in the last quarter of 2019. Four, the government's decision to default on payment of all its outstanding euro bonds in March of 2020. Five, the Beirut port explosion on August 4, 2020, which caused major destruction in the Lebanese capital and led to the resignation of the government. Six, the prevailing energy deficit that is paralyzing dynamic socioeconomic sectors on national scales. Those are to name a few. The Lebanese economy has plunged into a severe contraction across all economic sectors, combined with an unprecedented surge in prices. According to the IMF, the economy has contracted by about, by about 30 percent since 20, 2017 and is expected to contract further in the remaining 2021 and 2022, while growth contraction has been estimated by Banque du Liban, the Central Bank of Lebanon, BDL, at negative 21.5 percent in 2020. The Lebanese lira has lost approximately 90% of its value and food prices have increased almost tenfold since May of 2019. Unemployment is exceptionally high and over half of the households are below the poverty level. The average inflation rate in 2020 is 85%, whereas the year-on-year -year inflation between July 20 and July 2021 has reached 123%. In the midst of the challenging circumstances that Lebanon is facing, BDL, the Central Bank of Lebanon, has, deployed, has been deploying measures to help the economy survive. And here I'm, work, I'm talking in my capacity as, a, as an observer. I'm not a central bank official. I haven't been an official for the past two and a half years. So as an observer, looking at what the central bank has been doing and assessing the effectiveness, the effectiveness of the measures, I've really counted and uh, put together what the central bank has been doing. So these measures, actually, through this, the Banque du Liban has issued a series of circulars that reflects, reflect its management crisis strategy, along with some key economic priorities. Th these initiatives can be divided into three main categories. One, the monetary and exchange rate policies. Two, socioeconomic support. And three, financial sector regulations. The first one is the monetary and exchange rate policies. The, the BDL took measures aiming at facing the challenge of inflation caused by foreign exchange depreciation. They included supporting imported raw and industrial material, and two, prohibiting banks from buying foreign currencies in the parallel markets. As for the socioeconomic support, BDL took measures through many circulars aiming at mitigating the effects of GDP growth deterioration, such as launching the Lebanese Oxygen Fund to support industrial imports, 
and two, providing banks with foreign currencies to finance the import of basic food items and raw materials necessary for food industry. Another measure was within that, within that context, was confronting the diverse macroeconomic crises that have exacerbated the level of poverty, the economic financial crises, the COVID-19 crisis, and the Port of Beirut uh, explosion. These measures include directing banks to refrain from downgrading the classification of default borr defaulting borrowers, and compelling banks to provide exceptional loans to individuals and businesses affected by the Beirut port explosion. The third, the third, third element was the financial sector regulations. BDL took measures aiming at strengthening the positions of banks in terms of solvency and capital, capitalization, which in turn contributes to protecting depositors' funds. These measures include actions such as applying a statutory expected credit loss on foreign currency placements, directing banks to refrain from disturbing profits to shareholders, and compelling banks to prepare a plan to conform to the minimum capital requirements. In addition to that, there was a committee that was established to uh, look at and restructure the Lebanese banking sector. My concluding remarks. The initiatives launched by, the, by BDL, the Central Bank of Lebanon, through its circulars to address the economic financial crisis in Lebanon need to be combined with a set of key performance indicators to be able to assess their economic, financial, and monetary repercussions and measure their quantitative results along with the ex extent of compliance. Monetary policy measures will remain of limited impact in terms of time frame and macroeconomic factors if they are not accompanied by and integrated with the development of a comprehensive and integrated economic financial plan in the short, medium and long term. Such a plan would include structural reform measures aiming at first treating the underlying imbalances in public institutions, especially those related to governance, public service, and source of, sources of production. Second, implementing a fiscal strategy that addresses the inherent in inequity in the tax systems and its mechanisms, the deficit in the public finances, the rescheduling, restructuring of the public debt, and the expansion of the social safety net. Third, correcting the shortages in the balance of payments, especially resulting from the deficit in the trade balance, in addition to the weaknesses in the mechanisms of the competitive economy and the integration of the market forces. Fourth and last, pursuing a comprehensive restructuring of the financial sector and establishing a credible exchange rate system. The ultimate objective remains, remains to transfer the Lebanese economy from a rentier state to a productive reality. Thank you very much. Thank you indeed uh, very much. And uh, we, uh, I must say, I'm very impressed by what you said on the drama of the situation which uh, Lebanon has to cope with. And uh, all the elements of a perfect storm are there, I mean, without any exception. And uh, I see also the acceleration of inflation which is quite impressive because you, you said 90% and if I understand 123 over the last 12 months, which is uh, quite uh, dramatic, totally dramatic. Um, thank you very much indeed.